All right, so to be here today, I'm very appreciative. Uh, as as uh, General Mason talked about, I am an ROTC cadet. I am the result of an ROTC program, and I'm pretty proud of that. Uh, and to be here talking to these cadets is something special. So if you bear with me, and let me just uh, welcome some people here, then we're going to come back to uh, what I'd like to talk about this morning. So first, to General Ham and General Swan, who's representing him, and the AUSA team, thank you for this great venue to come in and talk about Army messages, and I'm greatly appreciate to all of a AUSA. To a special guest that's here today, and he's going to yell at me later on uh, after I do this, but I don't really care. Uh, as the sign says, growing leaders and developing citizens, we've all been mentored in our years growing up, uh, and I'd like to introduce Lieutenant General Retired um, Arthur Gregg. Sir, where are you at? Please. Lieutenant General Arthur Gregg was the Army G4 and later J4 during his career, but he's done so much more than that as he has pushed uh, modern logistics, uh, taking care of people, and leading from the front. And sir, it is always a great honor to be with you. Thank you. I'd like to say thank you to Lieutenant General uh, uh, Mason, who introduced me. Um, many of you don't know, but I had the great honor and privilege for being around General Mason many times. And on more than one occasion, I actually stood at attention uh, as he was coaching me. <laughs> and uh, sir, thank you very much. <laughs> uh, others that are here today, uh, and I'll miss a couple, but Lieutenant General Andre Pegui, the Army G4, Lieutenant General Ed Daly, the Deputy Commander of AMC, Lieutenant General Darrell Williams, uh, the, the Director of Defense Logistics Agency, um, and other three stars that are here today, thank you so much for being here. Uh, uh, but I would like to put the emphasis on the cadre of ROTC uh, and the cadets that are here today. And they are led well by Major General Chris Hughes and Command Sergeant Major Ken Krause. Gentlemen, thank you so much for your leadership and all that you do. Okay, to the cadets that are here today. Uh, I think this is an incredible luncheon, and I'm appreciative of the sponsorship, and I am appreciative that I get to talk to you. For I will tell you that being an ROTC cadet was life-changing for me. And if you bear with me for a second, I have a couple anecdotal stories. The first was uh, 1967, way before many of you uh, became members of the Earth population. <laughs> but I was seven years old, and I went to see the Yankees play. Uh, the New York Yankees, the greatest team, right? Oh. The Yankees were playing the Boston Red Sox. It was a doubleheader, uh, and I got to sit on the dugout. Uh, in both games, the Yankees won. Uh, and I got to see and uh, 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 not meet, I wish I did meet, Mickey Mantle, Mel Stoudemire, uh, and Joe Pepitone, heroes of mine when I was younger. I was at awe at the audience uh, at the stadium at the time, being seven years old, 50,000 plus people in the audience. Clearly, coming out of the stadium, I thought I was gonna grow up to be a professional baseball player, which you'll find out quickly, this seems to be a pattern I have with growing up to be a professional somebody. Um, but I was been distracted. Two months later, I was at Ohio State University to watch my cousin graduate from medical school. And in front of the graduating class, the front, there was these individuals in uniforms. And they were wearing navy white and marine blue and army green. Uh, and I reached up and grabbed my father, and I can remember this vividly. I grabbed his hand and I said, hey, who are they? Who's marching in front of all the students? And notably, I knew my cousin, who was about to be a doctor, was in the back. And he said, well, those are uh, future officers in our military. They're in what they call the ROTC program. I can hear these words resonate with me. I did not know what they were. I did not know what that meant. I must have looked confused. And so quickly, my father, being an educator, looked down at me. He says, remember when we were at Yankee Stadium two, year, two months ago, and you saw all those people in the stadium enjoying the game? I said, yeah. 
He says, those people in the front of that line, they protect all those people. They're responsible for the safety of the United States of America. That resonated with me. I was seven years old. I have never forgotten that conversation. As I pushed through my life and I graduated from high school, uh, I was on my way to the NFL, for sure, on my way to the NFL. I was, at best, an average football player in physical stature, but mentally and my heart just told me I was going to the NFL. I went on to college, a small D2 program. Uh, coming out of spring practice my freshman year, I was the only freshman to receive a varsity letter, and I had been named uh, the defensive captain for the following year, uh, and I was going to play middle linebacker. The announcement went out, the team cheered, um, the coach saw something on my face again, called me into his office uh, afterwards. He goes, hey, I don't understand. What's the problem? And I said, well, you know, Coach, tr truthfully, I really appreciate it, and it's really going to be great, but I, got, I do have a little bit of a problem. He says, what? I said, well, grades are, uh, came out in January, and luckily I was able to intercept them uh, before my father got to them, because now I'm going to date myself, right? Grades went home in the mail. Um, I, and I intercepted those grades, and they were four Fs and a D, right? And so for you smart people, you know, cadets on back, uh, <laughs> that's a .076 grade point average. Uh, and so the coach looked at me, and he says, well, I think we'll be able to handle that. And, he said, and I said, well, I got more news. I said, I haven't even been to class in the spring semester. <laughs> I said, but don't worry, I can bench 4, 405 and I can run a 4740. Uh, will that help me? He says, no, we're going to have a little bit of a problem, but, <laughs> but I think we can work this out. That weekend, uh, I went home, uh, a little concerned about my father, truthfully, much bigger man than me. Uh, and uh, I was concerned about confronting him because I could feel this on my conscience. It so happens. That Saturday, I got home on Friday night. That Saturday, I was in Carvel Ice Cream, famous ice cream in New Jersey. And I met a classmate from high school who had been attending uh, Valley Forge Military Academy. This, this friend of mine, truthfully, went from long hair, uh, not going to class at all, didn't play any sports, did not participate in anything we did as a community or as a high school to this person who was standing at attention calling me sir. I, I've known him since we were third grade. I said, what happened to you? <laughs> like brainwashed. Uh, I said, what happened to you? He goes, hey, I'm a member of the Corps of Cadets. Uh, I'm in ROTC. I've been to basic training. Uh, and my goal is to be a second lieutenant in the United States Army. I said, where'd you do this? He said, Valley Forge Military Academy. That Monday, I asked my mother. She took me to Valley Forge. I took the two entrance exams, one for the school. I had to use my high school transcripts, to be honest with you. And then, um, and then the ROTC exam, right, which I passed. right. And so uh, I became a great member of the ROTC program. Life changing for me. Now. For those of you that are cadets, for those of you that were cadets, I suggest you may or may not have had this profound moment in your life, but I did. And let me tell you what codified it as I thought back on why this was so important to me. Because as a cadet, whether you join the active component force or you become a reserve component officer and a uh, future uh, citizen leader, you are joining a profession. A profession like nobody else understands. And let me explain to you what I mean by that. There's five key characteristics of being in a profession. And I want you to see if you recognize yourself. The first characteristic is honorable service. In order to have honorable service, by definition, you have to provide a service to your country, to your community, to your family 
that nobody else can perform. Only you, future soldiers, can perform what we do for our country. Only you will be trained and ready to go fight the nation's wars. Only you can go in and provide relief during natural disasters like nobody else can. It's your profession that's called upon when our rights, our Constitution, our way of life is challenged. Nobody else is called. You, number one. Number two, trust, our bedrock. Nobody can do their mission like we do our mission. We have always been successful. We will always be successful. We are counted on every single day to make sure that the enemy is always playing a home game, that they're never away, i.e., in our country. This trust is so implicit that every year when Time Magazine does a, a, a poll of the most trusted professions in America, what is number one? Our military. That is earned trust. That is not paid for. That is not uh, something that is given. We must earn it every day. We earn it through the ethic of our execution. When we fight war, we can be counted on to do what we need to do, but nothing beyond that. And this is important to us. Others will do things that we will never do. And you ought to take pride that you're part of that type of military. Esprit de corps. Often when I go to speak, right, mainly to school, high schools, ROTC programs, uh, community uh, venues, I get asked about my uniform, like many of you do. They want to know about the badges and the medals. And so immediately when I start the conversation, I point to this side of my ribbons. And they, somebody will raise their hand, no, sir, we want to know about these side of your ribbons. I said, no, you don't. This is a side of ribbons that reflect what I did as a member of a team, what I did in my company, what I did in my battalion, what I did in my brigade, what I did in my division. This is esprit de corps. This, when you come home from war, this is what you'll reflect on, those that you served with, those that you were so scared while you were out on that battlefield that you knew you could count on them, and they knew you could, they could count on you. That's esprit de corps. That's why these ribbons are most special to me. I'm proud of the individuals, but I'm most proud of what we've done as a team. That's our team, the Army. Whether you're active component, reserve component, it doesn't matter. It's a total army. We have to do it together, and we can do it together. I also reflect, just for what it's worth, on Second Lieutenant uh, Sam Kendricks. And many of you saw Sam competing in the Olympics recently, about a year back, right? Remember a pole vaulter, right? Sam was getting ready to compete, a life dream. He has been competing, training for, I would say his whole life to be in the Olympics. He's heading down the runway to make his jump. And off in the distance, he hears the national anthem playing. What does Sam do? Stops dead in his tracks and comes to the position of attention and defaults his turn. Why? Because he's doing something bigger than himself. He's doing something for his army, for his country. That's what stopped him in his tracks. The esprit de corps of being a soldier, Second Lieutenant Sam Kendrick, knew to come to attention to respect the national anthem and our flag. We ought to be proud of Sam. The fourth, stewards of our profession. 
We are responsible for self-regulating ourselves. Nobody else regulates us. We regulate ourselves. We don't tolerate people being mistreated. We don't tolerate sexual harassment. We don't tolerate people not being treated as equals. We don't tolerate poor morals and integrity. We will self-regulate, and we do self-regulate, and you ought to be proud of that. And don't allow others to regulate us. Do it when you see it. Do it when you're in a position of authority, and don't allow those to undermine our great army. Second in that category is we educate and certify ourselves. We do this our whole careers. No other profession will bring leaders, NCOs, soldiers back to be educated throughout their career. No other profession does that. Why? Because we have to be the most competent people there are. And I say this to you because of the fifth characteristic. The fifth characteristic of making sure we are the military experts. Why? Why is competence and character so important? Why is your commitment so important? Because I will tell you, future leaders of our great army, no matter what component you're in, you will be responsible for two main things. You'll be responsible for training and taking care of soldiers to go into harm's way. Nobody else does that. You're responsible. And then second, and most importantly, you're responsible for training somebody that might have to take somebody else's life in defense of your country. That's your responsibility. That's why competence, character, commitment, the five characteristics of our profession are so important. This is why ROTC changed my life. This is what I would suggest to you, if you embrace it, whether you become an active component officer or a reserve component officer, you will find powerful things in your future. The responsibility is great, but those who accept it will have the great privilege of serving our country, right, and serving our soldiers, whether it be in combat or taking care of our fellow citizens after a hurricane, and nobody else will know what you feel. That's why we come together. That is why we're known as a profession. This is your future, and you should be excited about it. The Secretary of Defense said today in his closing comments, he says, it can't be about you. It's got to be about our nation. And if you always think bigger than yourself and bigger than your organization, I guarantee you success. Success not only in your profession, but in your life. So with that said, I thank you all for this time and this great honor of being here. I wish you all the best in your future endeavors, and God bless our country, our Army, and you. Thank you very much.